Hello friends. Thank you for attending this session. A very warm welcome to all of you from JK Technosoft. This is the third in a series of webinars for progress legacy modernization. Today we are going to discuss the topic of road to progress legacy modernization, making the right architecture and technology decisions. I am Arun Sikri, your host for today. And with, and with me, I have Prabhu Jha, who is the solution architect at JK Technosoft. Let me first go through some housekeeping items. This will be a 45 minute session. In case you have any queries during the course of the session, please feel free to use the Q&A window on the right hand side of your screens and we shall take the questions towards the end of the session. Let me now take you through the agenda items. First, we will go through a quick recap of the business drivers for progress legacy modernization, followed by a recap of the four pillars of legacy modernization that we've been talking about. We will then go through a platform upgrade framework from JK Technosoft, and then we will talk about the technology upgrade option where we are going to show you a sample application and a demo of modernizing that sample application. We will then go through the expectations and benefits, followed by what we as an organization bring to the table. Let's now look at the major drivers of legacy modernization. Organizations face a lot of challenge due to legacy that exists within their system. According to a study, around 70 to 80 percent of an organization's IT budget is being spent in maintenance of legacy applications, while only 30 percent of it gets utilized for new development and innovation. Due to this legacy that exists within the system, organization faces, organizations face problems like high maintenance costs, unmitigated risk of unsupported software, higher time to market, problems while doing change management due to inflexible and closed architecture. And uh, one of the biggest problems is lack of skilled resources on legacy technologies. Therefore, one may think that organizations are facing a kind of a legacy crisis. And the only way to overcome that legacy crisis is to do legacy modernization. Let's now take a quick recap of the four pillars or the four options for progress legacy modernization that we've been talking about in our previous webinars also. The first one here is the platform upgrade option where we talk about the version upgrade, platform upgrade, and application upgrade. It's basically a uh, activity to make your software supported and risk-free uh, your business, basically de-risking your business. The second one is a technology upgrade option. This is an option which you take up from a strategic perspective. And uh, you, you re-engineer your application and uh, improve the customer experience around the application using multiple technologies. And we'll be talking about that in detail as we go along. The third one is the cloud pass option, where we explore opportunities to, to put the infrastructure on the cloud and de-risk your business and make your, make your infrastructure scalable uh, for the future. And the fourth one here is the cloud A pass option, where you develop and deploy on cloud using frameworks that are available. There are various frameworks like salesforce.com, and the modulus framework and the role-based framework from Progress, which you can actually go ahead and use uh, to develop and deploy your application on cloud. Today, we are going to focus on two of these options, the platform upgrade option, as well as the technology upgrade option. Let's now deep dive into the platform upgrade option, and I will invite Prabhuja 
to talk about it. Thank you, Arun. So, uh, as uh, you know, uh, Arun has discussed that uh, when we decide to uh, take the initiative of modernization, uh, the platform upgrade is the very first uh, steps you might want to take if you are in that situation where uh, you have uh, you know not given a thought to upgrading your platform yet. Uh, often we come across with the, with the questions or the situation where uh, clients ask us or our prospects ask us that how do we move on doing this? I mean, what is our uh, you know way move forward? So uh, we just wanted to demonstrate or just wanted to give you a very a high level framework that how you wanted to move forward on that. So uh, this framework is, is just on a based on a four simple principle that you collect the information about your system, you analyze that information, then you define the solution, what you want to do, and then you deliver the solution. So uh, <clears throat> let's take the very first uh, you know items when we talk about the platform upgrade. That before you you I mean you, before you take this journey, you wanted to evaluate your uh, you know obviously a business objective, and then based on that. The uh, first thing you wanted to do understand is what is your existing business process of your application? Um, what is your is your application uh, business process is too complex? It is too easy? It is uh, it is it is going through the changes all the time? It is it is it is uh, it is or it is uh, static? It is not required any change? Uh, what kind of application uses uh, pattern of your of your system is? I mean, is it been used by uh, your partner, your vendor? Your internal user, or it is just uh, very few users, which is who use your application. So, uh, nothing much needed to be done on that part. So you collect that information and then you analyze it. That does it? Does any of these need to change? Does your business process is is not very optimized? It, does it has the bottlenecks? Does your application usage is, is not optimized? Is it growing? It has a uh, it has a you know <clears throat> peak and valley demand pattern. So so you so you define that. Uh, in, in that analysis, and if your answer is yes, that there are uh, needs changes needed, so you define the change around it, and then you develop the change for that. Uh, you deliver the change around it. Uh, so uh, going forward, uh, uh, the next thing you wanted to analyze is okay, what is the version of software I'm using? Uh, whether it's open as version uh, 10 less than 10, or it is uh, the greater than 10 version. Uh, what other software versions I'm using? Uh, for example, the ODBC driver or some other, uh, you know, associated open source software like, you know, data server or uh, app server or or any other components like, uh, you know, uh, round table or anything like that. So we, what are those versions are? What are those softwares are? What are their versions are? And uh, and and we we recommend that if your if your answer says that okay you are on less than version 10, then you are obviously missing a lot of. Uh, Latest, latest and greatest enhancement or which progress has brought in uh, version 11 software. So uh, you may want to define your change around that, that okay, I wanted to upgrade to version 11, and I wanted to migrate to version 11. Uh, so that will be your uh, change or delivery. Uh, in the same line, uh, you may wanted to uh, analyze your state of the hardware, how your hardware is performing. Is it in the you know end of the life cycle of, or it is uh, about to be decommissioned, or it is a new hardware? Um, it is unsupported hardware, or it is about to be get unsupported. So uh, you define that, and uh, based on that, if 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 you see that need that okay, I need to uh, move to a, a you know a infrastructure which is scalable, which is which is uh, where I don't have to manage uh, my own data center. So then you can decide on one of the cloud solution. Uh, the cloud solution can be any of it, whether it's a public cloud or the private cloud or the hybrid cloud, and then you <clears throat> deliver a around it. I mean, uh, just to give you an idea that Arcade from the House of Progress is, uh, comes with uh, is, is on the Amazon-based uh, cloud service. It comes with a pre-installed version of uh, uh, various uh, you know combination of the open edge software. So uh, you can you can choose the one which is uh, best fit for your for your. Uh, demand of your application. You don't have to pay any upfront cost. You only pay for the use, the license you use, then you can uh, scale down if you have to scale down. So uh, then you deliver the solution accord according to it. Uh, same goes to the your UI demand. Um, uh, you may want to uh, analyze, collect the information, okay, how is my user interface demand is happening? Is it uh, my user interface is being accessed by only the internal user? It is uh, accessed by all over in the world if, if, if it is a you know, B2C type of system, 
or it has been used by my partners or vendors or suppliers or other peripheral uh, users in the systems. So uh, you answer that question and then uh, you kind of analyze, okay, if it is an old user interface, uh, let's say if you are in the character user interface, then you can plan based on your application and uh, user interface uh, demand pattern, you wanted to move to the graphical user interface, or you can directly do a, take a quantum jump to the web-based web, web UI. And uh, you can deliver this solution using other web speed or uh, telic uh, based uh, tools, which is uh, you know Progress is offering now. And, uh, and another uh, thing which uh, which we you you need to consider is uh, all the integration points of your current application. Uh, for example, uh, you are talking to uh, some other enterprise system or uh, some vendor system or some supplier system. So how that integration is happening? Is it happening through the or some age-old ODBC or some batch system or, or 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 some other system where I know you know the problems with the batch. You have a lot of cron tabs running in the night and they are passing the data in and out and something falls, it goes to the log file and you check the log file. Uh, it may have some triggering system to uh, send some email or alerts, but uh, again, you have to deal with it. So you may want you to consider at that point that, okay, I want you to go to automatic or real-time integration, which you can achieve through a web service or using the data direct connector. So so uh, this, this is a very high level framework to just to uh, give you a starting point that if you wanted to take the legacy modernization and the very first step in that is the platform upgrade. So how you move on that? Uh, now I would uh, request Arun to uh, discuss, uh, you know, uh, what kind of expectation we can have out of this. Right. Uh, so while taking up any legacy modernization initiative, there will be some set of, uh, certain set of expectations. <clears throat> And we have put down these set of expectations here. So let, let's look at them uh, one by one. So platform upgrade option, when you take up only the platform upgrade, it is basically a low business risk option because you are actually maintaining the status quo and uh, it's just a hygiene activity. So it's a very low business risk option. It's a low budget option, of course, and uh, very less time consuming in most cases. Uh, you are basically moving to a supported version of the software to de-risk your uh, business. And uh, in case you invest in improving the user interface, uh, uh, like Prabhu mentioned, from a green screen to a GUI-based interface, or maybe from a GUI-based to a web-based interface, then you get a certain set of advantages from there. But then uh, the world is moving very swiftly towards social-ready, mobile-ready, responsive uh, user interfaces where UX and UI play a very important role, uh, you may not go that far while doing a platform upgrade. So uh, that counts for a no. The architecture still remains monolithic and uh, you're not really ch touching the architecture there unless there is a, a very bad case of uh, changing some design. Uh, the process bottlenecks Still, you are, don't have any visibility in terms of process bottlenecks that exist within the system because we are not bringing in any improvement in terms of the processes, and that may not be the uh, scope for uh, platform upgrade option. Uh, dynamic collaboration with partners may increase uh, somewhat because uh, while we are actually changing the user interface and making it web-enabled, uh, we actually uh, get an opportunity to make the UI available outside of the organization to customers and partners. And automated business processes and workflows uh, are not implemented because we are not uh, going there actually. Uh, uh, configurability of business processes uh, is not there. So, um, and we are not actually touching that part of the application while doing only the platform upgrade. So clearly, if we look at this chart, we see that Platform upgrade is bringing in its set of advantages, but uh, they are limited in nature. And if one needs to go further than that, from a strategic perspective, uh, to future-proof their business, then one needs to take up a larger initiative than only platform upgrade. And that is what actually takes us to the technology upgrade option. Right? So uh, let's talk about the technology upgrade option. And uh, let's see what are the prime objectives of the technology upgrade option. Uh, 
while we are actually going ahead and modernizing a legacy system. So first one we are talking about here is re-engineering, where we redefine the architecture and redesign uh, the existing application uh, from overall design and architecture perspective, and we actually go ahead and improve the customer experience by building a new UI, right? The second one here is uh, integration and reuse, and this is a very important one. Whenever uh, anybody would take a legacy modernization initiative, one should look at how much reuse is possible from the old system, because there is a lot of investment that has been made in the older system, and over the years, uh, there has been knowledge built from functional perspective, technology perspective, and there is uh, some amount of code which possibly could be reused. So these things should be considered, and uh, there could be scenarios where uh, one needs to actually integrate with the older systems, older databases, or maybe you know, uh, creating modular snippets of the reusable functionality and integrating with them. So that is something that should be considered. And the third option, a third area there is course implementation. Uh, uh, what we recommend is basically to implement or bring in as much out-of-box functionality as possible so that your system becomes configurable. And uh, also, uh, when we are bringing in out-of-box functionalities, uh, while you know, by bringing in some kind of products uh, which actually help you in implementing your business processes, uh, they actually have a lot of functionality to, uh, to have you look at the pro processes and bring visibility into how those processes could be improved as you put them into the solution domain, as you put and implement those, uh, those products into the solution domain. So these are the three areas that we are primarily going to focus on while doing a technology upgrade. Now, let's move further. Uh, so here, we are going to talk about a typical case of a web speed based application. Uh, it's, uh, it's an e-procurement application which implements a purchase to pay process from business perspective. And uh, we, we are taking this sample uh, to actually upgrade it into a modern application. And this is the address case, while the 2B case will be showcased after this. So let, uh, I'll let Prabhu talk about it. Yeah, so like, uh, you know, I, like uh, Arun has mentioned, so uh, when we talk about an a uh, legacy uh, a legacy system a legacy application uh, we are we are we can envision that uh, you know it's it's usually consist of uh, two main tiers uh, i mean uh, if your application has been developed uh, somewhere 10 year down the line or 20, 10 year or 15 year before uh, you can easily relate to that that there will be an uh, you know presentation tier uh, whether that presentation tier can be your you know character user interface screen or it's a graphical user interface or even if, in a, if it is a web speed based HTML pages, you know. So uh, in those in those years, uh, if, if I mean I myself has worked in many applications over the years, and I have seen many clients and the customer in many applications. The way the application has been written is there was not very modularized. I mean, programmer came, they added their own set of uh, you know things, then they left some other programmer came. There was not easy to. Uh, maintain the, the the things which you started with, and uh, that kind of uh, you know end of uh, having uh, two tiers at sort of market. Although you started with the intention of three tier at that point of time, but it end up uh, remaining as a two tier where you have most of the business logic uh, written in you know in the dot .ps or the, the programs that kind of dot .w programs in which is running on the you know server side, and then some client side logic, and there was a not very clear separation left. There's a lot of uh, you know, validations or, or the logics kind of left uh, written on the uh, client side uh, presentation tier as well. So uh, this is a typical architecture, as you can see. Uh, you have some sort of, uh, you know, connectivity uh, using either the ODBC data source or some native connectivity or, or you know, some other batch type of integration is in, in place with your any other ERP system. Uh, the typical uh, problem uh, which, you know, we have seen over the years with this kind of system is the spaghetti code. Uh, when we talk about the spaghetti code, um, I mean, I don't know if, if you are, uh, you cannot envision it, but it is quite easy to see. I mean, some of your programmer, you're working on it, on a program which is written 10 years back, 
And if he is not the first first guy who has written it, then probably there are 15,000 lines of code, and he doesn't know what the 14,000 line does. He probably just deals with the thousand lines most of the time. And 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 you are with that code, you don't know what to do with it, but you don't you are afraid to touch it because uh, it's been there. So uh, that's the problem. Or difficult batch integration. Obviously, if you have written written so many cron cron programs, which is you know a kind of doing the integration, sending the data between uh, different systems. Uh, some log files has been maintained, but if something something drops during the night, uh, you have to you know check the log and then kind of deal with it. Or you may have some a bit advanced. You have some alerts in place, but still you have to deal with the failure. So uh, that thing is in there. Uh, tightly bound components, uh, you make one change in one input parameter in one program and then you don't know what else you're going to break, so you'll have to do a very rigorous testing across the you know, application and you hope for the best that you know, it goes through. It's a typical uh, scenario we have seen with many applications over the years. Uh, custom coded workflows, uh, obviously there was not many options to define uh, you know, configurable workflows in those days and everything workflow and business process was kind of a, coded in such a way that it's in the program. Uh, if there is a bottleneck, you probably know the bottleneck, but you don't have the clear visibility. I mean, you're just going through your thousand signs of log files and try to figure out, okay, where is my bottleneck and how to deal with it by some doing some, you know, uh, performance tuning sort of thing. But then it's again a, a sort of putting a patch on, on a big pebble, you know, sort of thing. So, uh, so that's the way it is. And obviously, all of these adds to a very high maintenance cost to your, cost to your existing, uh, you know, system. So, um, so based on that, I mean, we have taken a uh, taken this uh, this typical scenario, and we have uh, we have created an architecture, a re-engineered architecture, which is which is uh, where we have emphasized on uh, maximum configurability, as uh, Arun has mentioned, uh, using the cost product uh, from the umbrella of the progress. Uh, keeping the keeping the you know integration logic to uh, loosely coupled, and uh, so that one thing change it doesn't affect other thing, and uh, keeping all the integration real time and uh, and in the in the in the in the real time and uh, in the direct integration, and then you have uh, uh, you know separate uh, se separate uh, it based on uh, service consumer and service uh, producer uh, uh, you know architecture where every component either is a service provider or it is a service consumer. So uh, as you can see uh, here, um, uh, most of the data components, whether it's a uh, supplier system or any ERP system or any external or internal data system, it's the service provider. And you have uh, various business components here. When we talk about the business components, uh, it's uh, mostly uh, your uh, business rules written around, uh, some rule engines running around, and uh, you define uh, services uh, which will be consumed by uh, the other part of the application, which is your service consumer whether it's a user interface or some business pro process orchestration or some uh, service uh, you know, deployment system. Uh, we have taken, uh, uh, just to give you an idea that uh, how these uh, layers we have laid down, I mean, we have uh, developed a, a, a sample application uh, taking this exact architecture. Uh, for the user interface, we have used uh, uh, Telric controls for, uh, for the web-based uh, uh, you know UI and for the mobile side we have used uh, Telric mobile platform which is a, a hybrid uh, mobile development platform based on JavaScript uh, you develop once and you deploy on any of the mobile platform it, though it's a it's a hybrid uh, but it's uh, it gives you the feel like uh, a native and uh, and for um, in between we have used the uh, open edge uh, business process management system BPM and the OEF server uh, BPM has been used here to orchestrate and uh, and connect to all the components, uh, and and it's uh, it's been and the process flow has been defined in here. A connector is web service connector has been used to talk to the various components, and obviously in between we have uh, the web uh, service oriented architecture. Uh, in the component side, uh, we have used the Corticon BRMS to uh, separate the business rules. Uh, we have put them in the Corticon, and uh, and then we have uh, other OE modules uh, which is defined in the Open Edge. Uh, open edge uh, uh, progress uh, path application server, and uh, we use the data direct to connect to the various uh, data sources here uh, underneath, underneath it. Right, right, and all these tools that uh, Prabhu is talking about can be replaced by other tools. So it is not necessary that you use these tools only, uh, but then any of those tools in the BBM area or BRMS area. 
could be utilized. However, the core principle out here is loosely coupling uh, the overall architecture and then also enhancing the UI part of it using the Telric set of controls, which is very famous and very well renowned. And on the other hand, using Data Direct for integrating, uh, if that suits your scenario. Let's now look at a working example uh, where we actually modernized this application uh, using this architecture. Yeah, so uh, the sample, sample application which, uh, which we have been built on the architecture we just discussed, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a simple uh, e-procurement uh, uh, purchase to a pay cycle where uh, I have, I have any organization has you know, a procurement portal where a requisition function can go in and uh, go and check that, okay, what kind of uh, vendors are offering what kind of uh, products and what discounts are there. And uh, based on that, they can submit, choose a particular set of products for uh, necessary for the organization, submit the requisition, and then requisition gets submitted, and it will uh, it will be uh, there for the procurement function to uh, take a look. And procurement function can uh, take a look. It can approve or reject the requisition. And uh, if they approve the requisition, then it will goes to the finance, and then finance approve it, and purchase order will be generated. And then uh, following that, it will go to the vendor. Vendor will uh, send the invoice, and invoice will be paid. So that's a typical cycle, but uh, we are not going to go that deep because of the time constraint. But uh, we are just going to touch base on uh, the UI part, uh, primarily a main main UI components. And then we are, we are going to talk about uh, behind the scene things that how the BPM, Corticon, and all these things are, are working and talking to each other. So let's take a look. So as you can see, this is a fully responsive UI uh, developed in the Telric uh, Kendo uh, system and uh, a procurement a request and login to the system. And uh, as you can see this page, uh, there are <clears throat> you know different uh, menu items. It's coming from the OpenEdge database. And uh, it's again a Kendo, uh, Tel Telric Kendo widget. Uh, all the products have been listed here. And uh, user can uh, page through the product pages, and this is again a very uh, configurable uh, Telric visit control. Uh, user can select any particular product they want. They can enter the quantity. Uh, this quantity will go into the Corticon uh, BRMS, and Corticon BRMS will bringing me all these offers. Uh, you know, see, you're seeing these offers from the Xerox Worldview and Compute World. It is coming from the Corticon system. Uh, the discount offering system has been defined there. A uh, user can change the quantity and select any particular uh, item based on the preference of this uh, pro set of products and submit the requisition. So once requisition submitted, here are the details. And uh, based on that, uh, user can go and check the requisition list. Uh, this is again a Kendo, uh, sorry, this Telric uh, Kendo uh, grid control tool uh, with all the features in that uh, tool, as you can see. And uh, procurement can come in for that uh, submitted uh, requisition and uh, log into the system and check that what are the requisitions are there. And procurement can check the particular requisition they wanted to approve or reject. Uh, based on that, user will uh, select a particular uh, Requisition and approve it. If it approves, it will uh, uh, go away from the list. A list can be refreshed, and a new set of requisition can be seen here. Uh, the same functionality uh, has been developed over the mobile, where uh, uh, this uh, procurement function can log in using the mobile apps. Uh, this is a telic based, telic platform based mobile apps. So uh, it can, uh, procurement can uh, log in into the mobile system, and uh, and they can uh, you know approve a particular requisition which has been uh, submitted by the requisition department here. You can see <clears throat> this is a Telic mobile uh, platform visit, and uh, here also user can select any particular uh, requisition it wanted to approve, and uh, or they wanted to reject from here, and uh, then procurement can see that. Uh, that particular uh, pending requ requisition has been uh, approved. And that's the typical process which goes behind it. Now let's take a look into the behind the scene things. 
Okay, so uh, as you can see uh, in that uh, UI, I mean, this is the open edge BPM we have been using. Uh, BPM is orchestrating the user interface here. Uh, this get item quantity, get vendor discount, and uh, write vendor discounts are the very best services. Uh, one, first one is the OE, uh, uh, OE adapter, and the, and the middle one is the web service adapter. The OE adapter is talking to, uh, the, to, to the database, and the last one is also talking to the database. As you can see, if you go to, uh, see, to configure into this, this is just hooked through a simple .p program, and it gets the data. And uh, this get vendor discount is hooked through a visual file, uh, and it is talking to the Cortigon, and Cortigon is sending the data uh, through this, uh, this. These are the connectors. And uh, if you, if you, once you deploy to the Open Edge, uh, you know this portal. Uh, Open Edge portal is has is a very powerful tool. It gives you the full management of all your business process. You can see all the instances of your deployed, uh, you know, process and. Uh, and you can you can go through the tabular view and you can view uh, you know all the you know work steps and their uh, you know status whether it's been completed where it was stuck and uh, in the chart view you can run through those works uh, through the uh, through the process flow as you can see here it's been completed here for all the process flow uh, you can run it and you can see uh, where the process flow has been has been uh, you know uh, taking time where it is not optimized and you can you can work through it uh, in the audit history, it can give you a very clear view that okay, which particular instance is taken how long, how long, and where is my uh, you know process bottleneck. So it gives you a uh, room to optimize your process. Uh, now I'll take a look into the BRMS Studio, uh, which uh, we have used for getting the discount data, the offer data. As you can see, this is a Corticon designer. Uh, this is the this is the vocabulary which we have defined for this particular sample application. Uh, the conditions are defined here, and the actions are defined below. And here we have, we can see in the column number two, we have, uh, you know, corresponding uh, data for the conditions and their corresponding uh, uh, data for the actions, like Xerox, uh, Xerox Worldview and Compute World, which was uh, based, came based on the quantity entered. Uh, once you go to the rule test, uh, it's, it's a very powerful tool. You can just drag your vocabulary here. And the same set of things which we did through the UI, you can do the same testing here. You can enter the quantity, you can enter the, uh, the data items, and you can run the test. It will give you the test result which you got from the UI. And, uh, and, and, and its deployment is quite easy. You go to the rule flow, you just right click and uh, publish it, and it will publish the, you know, the, the, this uh, particular as a web service, this particular rule flow as a web service. So it's as simple as that from that uh, perspective. Uh, now let's look at that uh, how, what we have uh, done for the mobile uh, UI. We use the Progress REST web service. And uh, this is a, uh, you know, a Progress Open Edge Editor where uh, you can, you can uh, you know, create the, uh, your REST service and you can, you can map your REST service with the, with the URI using the URI editor. You get a particular uh, resource which we, in this case, if you wanted to connect it, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's like your .p file or the program file where you have the various methods defined. Uh, you choose a particular, uh, you know, uh, URI parameter, and then you map it to uh, to your, uh, you know, web mobile interface uh, with uh, with the header and the body, and that's it. I mean, your uh, REST uh, mapping, REST service mapping has been done. Uh, it's, it's as simple as that. And uh, and let's take a look at how this uh, particular uh, SOAP and REST service has been used in our uh, sample application. And as you can see, uh, this uh, get menu was uh, was getting the data from the OpenAge database using the SOAP service. This is uh, the highlighted portion is the SOAP service here, and uh, that's 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 has been used, and that's the data uh, getting the method of the data uh, using this web uh, method. And this is how we have been uh, using the REST service, where uh, you know we have getting the item list and uh, into that uh, you know UI mobile UI. And this is the example of the REST service. So as you can see, um, we have used uh, all the you know important components of of uh, of you know a Corticon of uh, mobile Telic mobile platform and uh, Telic uh, UI for the web web you know web UI development and uh, and this Open Edge BPM for the orchestration of all these components which were talking to each other and we use the connectors web service connectors was a fully loosely coupled system and uh, configurability configurability was pretty high in the system. So uh, that was that was uh, you know uh, things which we wanted to bring out that uh, we how we have used that particular architecture. Um, 
I would uh, ask, uh, you know, Arun to uh, uh, now discuss again the expectation and benefit we have achieved out of uh, going the technology upgrade. Sure, Prabhu. Thank you. Uh, that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, so let's uh, now look at the same set of expectations that we discussed earlier for platform upgrade and see how the technology upgrade uh, option looks like. So uh, modernization with low business risk, I would still say that is a yes because we have the tools out there to make it low business risk. It may not be very less budget, uh, budget friendly or a very less time consuming, definitely not as uh, low, low cost and uh, less time consuming than the uh, platform upgrade option. However, spending that much more can actually bring uh, the advantages uh, of it. And let's, we will actually look at that also. So move, uh, moving to a supported version, yeah, we are going to do that. Uh, the UI is definitely better than before. In fact, it is uh, now the, a responsive UI and uh, mobile-ready UI. So uh, we've actually achieved a lot of uh, what uh, we really want. Uh, the architecture is completely changed. It's a loosely coupled architecture. And uh, because of uh, it being loosely coupled, uh, we are actually able to lower the maintenance cost uh, for future. Because if you change one thing, uh, at one place, you don't really have to worry about changing everywhere else. So change management and maintenance uh, are much more easier. Process bottlenecks are visible, and one can actually uh, change uh, the solution, uh, the, the, the processes based upon uh, how the process bottlenecks are coming up in the solution. We are definitely uh, increasing collaboration across partners, across uh, customers and even uh, uh, collaboration amongst employees because we are actually changing the UI and uh, making it more uh, uh, future ready in terms of making it mobile ready. And then the business processes and workflows are now configurable. So uh, it is all you know, free of custom coding. And uh, if, there, if there is any change at one place in the process, you just go ahead and change that on the widgets uh, or uh, uh, on the console, and uh, you get that change. You don't really have to do much coding around it. So uh, one can see that the technology upgrade option uh, actually brings in all the advantages that we wanted it to bring. Let's now move over and do a quick recap and a summary. So the platform upgrade option is a low budget, low cost initiative. Uh, and it is basically uh, an initiative where you're doing hygiene activity. Your te technology upgrade option is a more strategic initiative to future-proof your business. All the, all the scenarios may not be different, uh, may not be the same. So, so for different scenarios, the situations might be different and one need to do analysis uh, to actually find out what would be the business objectives uh, for each modernization initiative. Successful modernization initiatives start with business value. So uh, one should actually look at what are the goals that one wants to achieve by making a progress legacy modernization or legacy modernization. And these goals could be anything. You know, the measure of success could be anything in terms of moving, you know, maybe improving productivity of, of a field service employee or uh, reducing the cycle time of a work order uh, completion. So such business goals should be identified up front, and then one should work towards incrementally uh, showing results to business while doing modernization activities. So the program itself should be paced incrementally so that results are shown quickly to the business. Focus on re-engineering, reuse, and out-of-box through implementation of course products as we discussed, making, it, making sure that the, that the future architecture is loosely coupled so that maintainability can be increased and uh, change management and maintenance becomes low cost for the future. And finally, on the UI front, ensuring that the UI is future ready to meet the customer's demands of the organization and make the organization more competitive by web enabling and mobile enabling the UI and also, uh, from a technology perspective, uh, making the UI more responsive because 
there, there are a lot of devices out there today, and the UI needs to be responsive. And, and finally, yes, uh, you know, from a business perspective, uh, the UI needs to be accessible to customers, partners, uh, ultimately uh, helping to grow the organization for the, and, and making it future ready. Let's now move over and, and see who are our partners. Uh, as an organization, JK Technosoft has all these partners. Uh, we are a partner of uh, Progress, Microsoft, Amazon Web Services for cloud enablement, SAP, Oracle, uh, Salesforce.com, and, uh, and of course, Microsoft Azure for, again, cloud enablement. So, so you see, the thing is that whenever we go in and do a legacy modernization and take up that program, we take help from all of our partners and we provide independent advice uh, in terms of technology and uh, uh, in terms of any implementation that needs to be taken up according to the business goals of an organization. So we are a 20-year-old company with a lot of skills. Uh, we offer independent advice. We, we, are, we have greater agility because of our right size uh, uh, as compared to the larger vendors out there in the world. And then we have a lot of skilled resources, not only on progress technologies, but also all, all the technologies that we've talked about, the Java, .NET. And uh, uh, nowadays we are focusing a lot on the mean stack, the MongoDB, ExpressDB, AngularJS, and uh, Node.js, the JavaScript stack also. So uh, we have all those skills available with us. So that, that actually brings us to the Q&A section. And let's see uh, what questions are there in our Q&A window. OK, so, so the first question out here is, in the suggested architecture of demo, can we develop application without OE BPM? If yes, then how different components will talk to each other? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, yes, the question, uh, the answer is yes. We can we can very much uh, replace the BPM with the with a typical PaaS, which is a PaaSic application server, and uh, and and we we can we can uh, very much uh, do the same set of orchestration. We can maintain this uh, this uh, loosely coupled architecture. There's service oriented architecture there. We can deploy our services using the PaaS, and uh, PaaS is is coming with package with the Tomcat. Uh, Apache Tomcat and it already now, uh, which is uh, Progress is bringing out. It's a very stable, very robust application server now. When we talk about the middleware, <clears throat> and uh, and but yeah, obviously uh, BPM has its own set of advantage. You can uh, you can have a very clear uh, uh, you know uh, on visibility on the process bottlenecks. And you can you can uh, right. You know, so so, so if you if your aim is to actually improve your processes yeah. and uh, business processes, then you may need the BPM. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, it all depends upon your own situation. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you, Prabhu. The next one is uh, about the mobile UI. Is it, is it native, hybrid, or browser-based? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a hybrid-based, uh, and uh, and and the reason the reason uh, it has been hybrid-based is is uh, is because that uh, uh, you know our Telric platform is one of the best mobile platform out there. And uh, and 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 uh, we are we are uh, you know we have using this uh, for for this one main reason is that you develop once and they deploy anywhere you know uh, you develop uh, this in the Telic mobile platform and you can run it on uh, whether it's an iOS or Android or, or the Windows and and, uh, and and although it is a, it is a hybrid but it will, it, it will give you very much uh, you know look and feel of of a native where you can. Uh, use it through the you know Play Store, Google Play Store, or the iOS, iTunes Store, or uh, mobile uh, web store, so uh, Windows web store. So, so uh, it 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 uh, it may not be uh, maybe 10% uh, functionality. It may not able to give as a native, but but other than that, it it gives the perfect functionality. Uh, you you can looking from the mobile web application. Right, right. Uh, okay, so let's look at if there is. Okay, there is another question. How do I decide that BRMS is needed for my application? Uh, I will say uh, this is entirely based on your uh, 
situation. Uh, if, your, if your application, if your system is such that it requires a lot of rule changes uh, on a very frequent basis, let's say on a, on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis or on a, on a daily basis, uh, then probably uh, BRMS is the right solution for you. You may want to separate your uh, the rules from your from your program. I mean, because or or if you are using some sort of a screen which which takes the data and then uh, you know use that data inside the program, you are still uh, stuck in that loop of uh, maintaining the rules through the program. So you may want to do get yourself out of it. And uh, Cortigon is a very powerful tool just to uh, give you an idea. It, it comes with a complete set of, uh, you know, uh, checking that correctness of the rule, uh, f uh, completeness of the rule, uh, rule conflict, uh, duplicate rules. You can test the rules, so all those features are out there. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, so we don't have any more questions out here. Uh, that brings us to the end of our session. If you have any more questions, uh, you can uh, post them to us offline at the email ID that's up on your screen. Uh, do meet us at the APJ Spark conference in Australia on April 21st. We will be, we will be there. Uh, do take a moment to uh, fill up a short survey that will come up on your screen uh, after you end the session. Thank you so much for attending. Have a good day. Bye-bye.